Hi guys, uh, in this video I'm going to give you an overview of the Gadger Classic Espresso Machine. Um, this being about the best home single boiler espresso machine that uh, you can buy when you're serious about espresso. Actually uses a boiler rather than a thermo block like a lot of the cheaper um, the cheap budget espresso machines do. And this particular one is, is an additional one I acquired um, when I was getting a few little bits and pieces and uh, I will be doing a full service on this uh, including stripping the boiler and all the components, replacing all the seals and, uh, and getting this back up to scratch and what have you. So, uh, what I'm going to do in this video however is give you an overview of the machine and, uh, and what you get with the machine. So you've got a stainless steel case in either polished stainless steel or brushed stainless steel depending on the year of manufacture. Um, in some machines like this one which is the, uh, the Gadget Classic which is a special edition one you've got a, a gold chrome plating on certain components such as your exhaust tube for your, for your um, three-way solenoid valve and the tray down here and the fancy little badge up here and of course your portafilter handle. So on the machine, very very simple, you have a power adapter with a standard, let's pull this out and show you, a standard three pin kettle lead at the back and you have a passive heating system whereby it has a stainless steel lid and you can place cups on there and the heat from the boiler will keep your cups warm. You've got three buttons on the front, you've got an on off switch which lights up as you can see, you've got a steam switch and you've got a brew switch. On the side you have your steam knob which unscrews anti-clockwise and screws in clockwise. That's just a plain plastic knob and then underneath here You've got the group head directly above which is the boiler inside the case. Here you've got the porta filter and inside that you have a basket. This particular one is a double basket, this is a single basket. You can see the shape difference there. Obviously the single basket will hold a smaller amount of coffee to make a single shot of espresso. Your double basket will hold a larger amount to make a double shot of espresso. Um, the porta filter is chrome plated brass. This is a good thing because again on the cheaper machines you will get pot metal or alloy uh, port filters which do not hold and retain the heat as well. Please note the cat is not included um, with this machine. Um, the brass, the chrome plated brass however will hold and retain heat incredibly well and give you a much more consistent brewing temperature. Brewing temperature is very very important with a good espresso. Your port filter baskets are stainless steel and they snap in so that they're nice and solid and they won't come out when you bash your puck out. Uh, on the cheaper machines you'll often find that you have a little flip handle and the baskets just drop in, they're not actually held in place. So there's your port filter handle, uh, the actual handle it bolts on and this is just plastic but the rest of this is solid brass, very very weighty. Uh, on the newer machines you have a single spout at the bottom with a screw on double pour spout out of the sides. I guess the advantage of that is possibly the fact that you can unscrew that and just use it if you make single espressos but to be honest it's neither here nor there. With the gadget you'll also get a tamper, a high quality plastic tamper. Uh, now this thing is rubbish, uh, you can see it's got a big ugly seam down the centre, it's about 57mm in diameter and accordingly rattles about inside the basket like something not right. Now don't get me wrong, it will do the job if you don't have a proper tamper, but if you buy this machine and you're serious about your espresso, get a proper tamper ordered as soon as possible. A good stainless steel tamper with a handle of your preference, the handle doesn't matter as long as the base is a good solid stainless steel 58mm diameter, and you can get them from around about uh, 10 to 15 pounds on eBay and there's a couple of websites in the UK where you can get them for around sort of 15 to 20 pounds as well so they're, they're quite readily available. In addition you can also buy a blanking disc which is very much like a standard portafilter basket the only difference being it has no holes in the bottom and this is for the purpose of back flushing because 
because of the three-way solenoid valve which sucks up excess moisture after you've finished brewing and spits it out of this tube here um, it will also suck up coffee oils and bits and pieces and once a month or depending on how frequently you use it every now and again you need to, you ideally need to back flush this to put some uh, some cleaning solution in a blind basket and then pump it through release it and let it suck that up and, and clean through so there's no gunge in there. You can do this manually of course by disassembling it but this but that as a regular routine maintenance makes things an awful lot easier. So underneath at the bottom you have a plastic drip tray with a metal grid on the top. Note the orientation here with a little hole at the back for the three-way solenoid valve tube. This pops out like so. Inside there you have a plastic plate which is removable and this basically allows water to drip down onto here and down through the corners and then your three-way solenoid valve tube down here so it's not splashing back at you. Optional, you don't have to use that. And a good deep, as you can see, so it's right down to my first knuckle there, um, uh, sorry my second knuckle even, and what you've got there is a good deep drip tray. Now some people sort of grumble at the fact that it's plastic, I don't really see the problem, it's there to catch water and it does the job admirably. So there's the drip tray. Stainless steel casing throughout. You'll notice often that you get little patches of rust on here and that's just unfortunately because of the design because water, steam condensation etc all kind of drips around here. So you will get little patches. It won't affect the use at all. Your exhaust tube for the three-way solenoid valve simply pulls out. It's sealed by a little o-ring up here so that pulls out there. And then at the back you have a water tank. Oh, let me just move the steam arm out of the way. You have a water tank and your inlet tube. There should also be another tube. You'll see you'll see a little nub there where my finger is. And this is for the overpressure valve that pumps water back into here if it's um, if it's been forced through at too high a pressure. Um, this is how you set your pressure for brewing if you want to fiddle about with the overpressure valve to set it from the factory standard which is typically about 11 bar down to 9 bar as some people do. Now that's a contentious thing, some people think it makes a difference, some people don't, some people think vibratory pumps need to be set at higher pressure um, and I think personally the best way to go with that is, is if you want to do that is try a shot at both extremes and you know kind of figure it out yourself use the same beans the same grind make the adjustments and actually do a taste test and see which suits you so rather than arguing the semantics of it so you've got a good size water container here holds about 1.8 litres when you slide this back in um, you need to make sure that your your uh, inlet tube and your outlet tube are both sitting neatly inside of there to draw up water um, just as a note, you don't need to remove this to fill it up. On the top, you have a removable lid with a hole and a funnel that goes right the way down into this through the back of the machine. So you can just fill it up through the top and fill up the reservoir and I'll show you that in just a moment. Over here we have the steam arm and it's a Panarello type. Now Panarello arms work in such a manner that uh, you get your, your milk jug you pop it in there, you'll notice it's got a tiny little hole, well you probably can't notice from here, but it's got a tiny little hole, about a millimetre in diameter up here. The plastic ones are similar, they usually just have a little slot up here. And what happens is, you put your milk in there, and it draws, it, it blows steam, and at the same time it draws in air through this little hole, creating a massive amount of froth. Now the best thing you can do with a Panarello arm, is pop it off, and throw it away, because the damn thing's useless. Um, a popular modification is the Rancilio Silvia steam wand, which is a much, much better designed steam wand, much, like, much more like a professional um, cafe machine would be, a, a two-group two head professional cafe machine um, with a longer angled steam arm and, uh, and it's just a much better design. So definitely worth considering. However, you can steam quite well with a Panarello arm without the Panarello attachment, which are nothing but a pain in the backside anyway. Um, best thing you can do as I say is throw them away, get rid of them, well don't throw it away, put it in the drawer and then at some point in the future if you decide to sell your machine upgrade of course you've got all the standard components. So that's handy. Um, so that swivels, it doesn't actually move up and down, it just swivels round like so. So you've got a, 
a, a range of movement, so it's adequate. But as I say, the uh, the Sylvia arm is is a better one, to be quite honest. So there's your primary components of the machine. So just pop those back in there. And your porter filter, you'll notice the two lugs there, locks in at an angle like so, and then you twist to seal. So, and then you can see that forms a nice tight seal because there's a rubber group head gasket underneath here where the shower screen and the group head is. And that's what creates a nice tight seal allowing the water pressure to all go through the basket and down out of here into your cup. So that's an overview of the machine. All the modern Gaggia Classic, it's worth mentioning, is now owned by Philips, uh, made by them and, and distributed by them. It, uh, it no longer has the three-way solenoid valve and the metal pouring spout down here is now a plastic pouring spout. Because of this, there are sort of suggestions that, uh, the discussions that these affect the operation and everything else. Um, I'm not sure of the ins and outs, but personally there's, there's absolutely no doubting that the older machines are much, much better built. Without a shadow of a doubt they are. Uh, essentially what Philips have done is they've taken a good old classic machine with a brilliant reputation and they've made it cheaper, but they're still selling it at the same kind of price. Um, and that's what a major electrical retailing giant like Philips do, sadly. Um, that's just the way it is. Gaja, however, uh, started off making a machine that would do an exceptionally good job of making espresso for the home user and give people the option of uh, having cafe style, barista style espresso in their own home. Philips had taken that and, and made it cheaper but they're still selling it for the same price so make of that what you will. Uh, personally I think it's a bit of a shame that they've they've made a mess of a, of a classic espresso machine. Um, that's my personal view. Others may think differently. Um, but, you know, they are, they are still quite good as far as espresso machines go. But I think it's, it's, it's a case of that you'd be as well off with a cheaper machine nowadays. Or buy yourself one of the older ones. There are plenty of these about on eBay. People buy them, use them for a few years. Some people get bored with the whole idea and, and stop messing about with coffee. Some people upgrade to better machines. The point is there are always plenty, uh, plenty of these around and about for sale. So you can pick up an, an excellent second hand one. And as I say, the telling point is the, uh, the three-way solenoid valve tube down here. The newer ones will not have this. So look for the older ones with with the chrome plated brass porter filters with the metal spouts or with the twin pouring spouts like this and the exhaust tube for the three way solenoid valve here. So that's an overview of the machine. Um, in the next video I'm gonna, we're going to go through the operation of the machine. Hope this one was useful and thank you for watching.